Hi guys, so in this session we're going to look at this paper one investigating small business for GCSE 9 to 1 at Excel. Uh, this is the extra assessment material set 2 for first teaching September 2017 as we can see. Now remember what I've said previously, if you start the paper in section A you're likely to spend too much time on section A and that won't give you enough time to complete the tougher questions where you need to go back and forth to the case study material. Uh, so let's zip forward to uh, section B now and get started there. We'll then come back to section A. Right, so here we go. Here's our case studies, uh, or the first of the two case studies that we get in section B. So this is on uh, Zoella. Uh, okay, so uh, we've got this, uh, this key content here. You may just want to pause the video right now and do a BMC scoper based analysis here, okay, where you run through the businesses. Uh, strengths and weaknesses, uh, its costs, its operations, its market positioning and its target audience there as well as the market and uh, the actual case study information so any numbers that you've got. Okay, that will give you great stuff to actually use in each of these following questions. Okay, so um, typically the outline questions are the poorest answered questions in the entire paper uh, on the GCSE series, okay? Uh, so it's, it's really important that you generate application within these answers. So outline one way that Zoella Beauty could use digital communication. So of course you've got to give direct application to what we've got in the case study here within your answer. So your answer must be developed in the context of that. It can still be very, very short, but of course it could be through using her uh, YouTube channel, it could be through using her uh, social media uh, communications to actually engage with her target market and then you can be specific about the actual target market. Uh, so let's uh, just have a quick look at uh, how to get two marks against the uh, mark scheme here. Now notice these sample answers that we've got here. Um, so you can actually see how applied these answers actually are to the case study. So by using social media, which may be seen by younger market segments. Okay, so that's directly targeted to Zoella's type of business there, of course. Okay, so let's move it on to uh, our next question here. It's the six mark question. We've got two of these in the paper, remember. Uh, so analyze the benefit to uh, Zoella Beauty of adding value. Okay, so uh, again, you may want to actually give this a go now in actually answering this. Remember to use the ID so you identify a benefit in this case. It must be a benefit. Uh, then you say this is because uh, this leads to therefore moreover consequently. You want to generate at least five strands of linked points, well linked points together with uh, at least at least at the absolute minimum two points of application to get into level three um, on the application band but to really hit top marks you're looking for probably three pieces of application which you use at the beginning in the middle and at the end of your uh, actual uh, answer here okay so that's the way in which you've got to structure this so give it a go now if you want so let's look at the actual uh, mark scheme and what this says about this. Okay, so uh, what we can see here is that we've got three marks for uh, AO2, the application, three marks for your analysis, that is your five linked points, remember. Uh, so to get into that top boundary, let's uh, just see what it says here, okay, that we've got to have detailed application. Well, we know that. Um, and further to that, yeah, you've got to deconstruct business information and issues. Well, really, it's just about logical chains of reasoning. If you've just got those logical chains of reasoning through your ID BLT plus moreover consequently structure, you're going to be fine there in terms of uh, attaining top marks. Look at some of the uh, examples that are provided here. Uh, so you've got those points in the mark scheme there. Look at the points of application here that are also used, okay? What did you choose to go for? Okay, great stuff, let's uh, move it on then. 
so next question. Uh, so we've now got a numerical based question. Okay, so uh, a retailer selling Zoella beauty products has three shops A, B, and C. Um, financial information for the three shops in the uh, month of June is shown in table two. Okay, right, so we can see this information is, is really just about cash flow here. So using the information in table two, outline why shop C has the most favorable net cash flow position. So if you're simply able to do uh, receipts um, minus the total payments, uh, you can do that calculation nice and easily. You can put that down uh, and that clearly helps to identify how the opening balance has gone from 2,100 to uh, a closing balance of 10,300. And remember your closing balance is your opening balance, this figure, plus or minus this net cash flow. And we can see that that's a decent net cash flow there that's actually occurred. Let's check this against our mark scheme here. Um, so notice what we see, all right? So the difference between receipts and payments is the highest at 8,200. So nice, straightforward calculation, okay? Nice and easy. Uh, so let's uh, keep going. Using the information in table two, calculate the average closing balance you're advised to show you're working. Okay, so let's uh, just get that in the screen. We can see our closing balances here. So what's the average? Well, this is again a nice straightforward question and all you've got to do as we can see in the mark scheme here is add up those points together and divide that by three. So that gives us uh, 10,000, okay? Um, often students get uh, a little concerned about the calculation based questions, but generally, as long as you know what to focus on, they're really not too demanding. Certainly in the paper one, that's certainly true. Okay, so uh, we've now got another analyze question. Uh, so analyze the impact on uh, Zoella Beauty of changes in what consumers want. Uh, so this is another analyzed question. Because it says impact, now you can go for either a benefit or a drawback. You've got a choice here, okay? So pick one or the other and then focus on that, identifying a few points. This is because this leads to, therefore, moreover, consequently. Okay, remember to include your application, however that application's got to be in there as well. So you may want to give that a go now before I show the mark scheme. Okay, so let's come on down to have a look at uh, what we've got in the mark scheme. Suitable points of application that you could use. Uh, so it could be about carrying out uh, more market research. Uh, it could be about uh, uh, adapting cosmetics to make sure they are more aware of environmental and ethical issues okay so uh, just really that understanding of what the product is that is actually being sold is, is generating applications so that's nice and simple in terms of understanding your application that you can use uh, next point that we've got here this will mean that Zoella Beauty can design products that are more in line with what consumers want okay as a result Zoella, Zoella Beauty can develop products which are not tested on animals etc so remember you've got to generate five linked chains of analysis so uh, ID BLT plus moreover consequently with application remember what we said a minimum of two, maximum of, uh, well, really, I'd aim for three to get sort of uh, six out of six here, okay? Um, all right, super stuff. So now, having done our second uh, analyzed question, we're then into some shorter questions before I'll justify one. So state one impact on Zoella Beauty of using e-commerce to sell its products. Uh, again, these questions often students can struggle with. Let's do both of these at the same time. And then we've got another outline question. Outline one way that Zoella Beauty meets customer needs. Remember, you've got to get that application across in both of these answers. Okay, so let's see how that is actually communicated in the mark scheme here. Okay, so with this first question, uh, Zoella Beauty may be more popular with uh, working people who cannot shop at Boots or Superdrug. Uh, lower costs as fewer sales through retail outlets. All right, so it means that Zoella uh, yeah, has lower costs because there, there isn't a middleman, so to speak. Okay, right, second question, the outline question. Uh, 
again, we've got some nice, uh, two nice examples that the mark scheme has included for us. So just take a look at those just to understand that question there. Right, so now we've got our justify based question here. So with this justify question, we've now got to break down which option you prefer most. Whichever option you prefer most, focus on that particular option and then explain that with a full five strand connected sentence. Now that should be IDBLT plus MC. Make sure you include your application within that two piece of application in that first paragraph uh, at least. Then you want to have a counter argument which should follow IDBLT uh, and then finally your judgment on which is best Okay, so with that judgment, you want to have an aim based structure. So answer the question. It depends upon uh, and the most important consideration. All right, so let's just check the mark scheme and uh, see what we've got here. Uh, so here we go. So increased promotion will uh, increase the awareness of the brand. Okay, yeah, well, this is nice AO2 stuff. Okay, we can see the points of analysis that can be raised. Okay, so this means that young people recognize the brand and be more prepared to try the beauty products ahead of those of rival companies. Uh, and then we've got some uh, judgment points that are actually stated here. So the most appropriate option for Zuella Beauty is to promote the brand. This is because the beauty products industry is driven by style and fashion and to maintain the fashionable uh, image promotion is essential. Otherwise, the brand could be uh, dated. All right. So lovely stuff, guys. Um, really just focus on getting that structure right. Five connected sentences with the option you prefer most, then three connected sentences as your counter argument, then your judgment, and make sure you've got application in every paragraph that you've got there. Okay, so we're now into our next case study. Now, remember the approach that you've got to use when you see these case studies. Don't read anything. Just go straight to the question. Go straight to the question, and then it means that you can come back to this point. Because by the time you've read all of that, and then actually read the question at the end, you've forgotten what you've just read. Uh, okay, and it wastes time. So make sure you don't do that. So we've got this uh, case study on pod point here. Uh, fine. Okay, state one variable cost that pod point may have to pay. Okay, well, obviously it would be uh, putting together their charges. Uh, okay, right. So uh, let's just make sure you've got a chance to uh, have a look at the case study there. There it is. All right, so pause the screen now if you want to go through that. And let's move on. Okay, so let's just show you the mark scheme there as well, just in case you put down something else. Okay, so uh, other alternatives, you can see two options are, are suggested there, but there's there's many alternatives that could be appropriate. Okay, next question. So we've uh, got some market research data here um, on market share. Uh, calculate the percentage market share of the Renault Zoe in 2016. Okay, so uh, fine. Um, now we can see that's uh, 100 minus 76.3. Okay, so how have they gathered that? Okay, where's the Renault Zoe? So it's this dotted one. Well, we can see the actual figures are given for each of these other areas. So therefore, you've just got to bear in mind all of this 100, of course, 100%. Okay, it's so the entire market. And therefore, you've just got to add up these other numbers. Okay, 100 minus, uh, as we just saw. Okay, let's move it along. Right, state one impact of on pod point of using crowdfunding uh, as a source of finance. Okay, so crowdfunding. Okay, pop your answer down just before I show it. Okay, so uh, options here, uh, as we can see in the mark scheme, raises capital to fund new charging technology. Notice that application that is highlighted here. You've got to get application even within those one mark questions. Really important. Once again, in the second uh, exemplar that they've actually given, you can see that you also need to have application there. So you've got to get application because it is an AO2 mark. So uh, that application is really important. 
Right, so now we've got another justify question. So remember the approach that you want to use here. So you want to focus on identifying um, your preferred option of these two options that you've got, and then run through those five connected sentences. Try to include at least two pieces of application. Then a counter argument. What would your counter argument be? Uh, and develop that with the BLT based approach. Okay, so this is because this leads to therefore uh, an include application, then your aim structure. Answer the question, justify your answer. It depends upon and most importantly. All right, um, remember to have application right throughout your answer. Uh, and if you do that thoroughly, there's no reason why you can't attain uh, nine out of nine on those uh, questions and uh, reach the top boundary. Okay, so let's have a little look at uh, the mark scheme, see what we've got here. So we can see three marks for AO2, three for AO3A, uh, and three for AO3B here, okay? So notice the uh, highlighted points for AO2. For AO3A, your recommendation and your, uh, your, your points of counter argument, okay, um, uh, are really highlighted under AO3B, okay, but you want to get that final justification across, okay, so that's really important there. All right, super stuff. And there's what it says in terms of actually uh, attaining top boundary, so level three, seven to nine marks. Right, love it. Uh, so final, final question in uh, this tough part of the paper, okay? When we go back to section A, you'll find this so much easier, guarantee it. So evaluate the importance of the reliability of market research data for pod points. You should use the information provided as well as your knowledge of business. Now, I think this is actually quite a tough question. Okay, you need to think about the fact that the reliability of market research here, you've got a uh, relatively new market, which is still in quite an immature stage of its development. Um, You've also got to bear in mind that there could be bias, that um, secondary sources of information uh, become outdated very quickly. Uh, so this is generally quite a tough question, but then you need to include application through this, of course. I've already included some application in what I've just said because I've referred to the fact that this market is relatively new. So your structure here, you want to actually provide a definition of what market research uh, is and how PodPoint have actually used that or what market research PodPoint have actually um, benefited or may benefit from. And we can see this is an example of uh, market research there in the actual case study. Uh, so that's nice. Then you want to um, give uh, five strands, five connected sentences, including two pieces of application, um, your counter argument and then you want to aim for a more detailed judgment so your, your more detailed judgment here is going to answer the question and fully justify your answer say what it depends upon and then state what you think is most important for this business um, now you may choose to actually focus on uh, the so-called chess elements in your evaluation that is the consequences of having improper research or research that isn't viable that they can't rely upon um, it's also about how this could help or hinder their progress okay how could it help in terms of their efficiency uh, and generating economies of scale uh, what about the short run long run differences and what impact on the success of the business could this have okay so those are your chess elements let's check the mark scheme um, so there it is. We've got uh, three marks for each of these different categories. AO1B, well, that's about the fluency of business language you use. AO2, AO3A, and AO3B. Great stuff, guys. There we are. Right, gang. So let's get back into uh, section A of this paper one extra assessment material set two. So let's uh, check out what we've got. Of course, the whole of section one, the section A, does not include any case studies, so you don't need any application to any particular businesses. 
So let's just deal with what we've got here. You can run through this section very quickly. Uh, so first couple of questions are always multiple choice questions. Uh, pause the video at any point here and have a go at answering these questions just to test your understanding. Now, just to show you the mark scheme here, we got uh, 1AC and 1BB uh, there. Okay, so let's uh, move it through. Now, this next type of question, the explain question, really very important. You get a good handle on how to answer these explain questions. Uh, there's six of these throughout your section A, so uh, that represents 18 marks of uh, your final sort of 90. So these these represent 20% of your overall marks, and really, I'd encourage you to aim to try and get 18 out of 18 here. How do you do that? Well, you've got to identify, in this case, a risk. Uh, then you say this leads to, then therefore, okay? Uh, so you can answer these uh, questions really quickly. Don't take up all of this space. Like, you don't need all of that. Maximum you want to write down to is down here, okay? You don't want any more than three sentences. Try to keep it under... Uh, at least 30 words, um, even better if you can keep it under 20 words, even better if you can keep it under 15, okay? Uh, so keep it nice and short and to the point. So explain one risk an entrepreneur takes when starting a new business. So that might be a financial risk that you identify. Then you'd say, right, well, this could lead to the potential for making a loss uh, and so on, all right? So just notice uh, the examples we've got uh, within the uh, mark scheme here so actually we've we've got a uh, financial loss okay so uh, this because starting a new business can be expensive as a result were the business to fail the entrepreneur would lose money okay so um, you can see it very much uh, follows this sort of three sentence based approach here okay uh, and again down here lack of security okay very nice uh, let's move it on through um, so as we come down the paper now, we've got another explain question. So another IDLT that we've got to approach this. Now notice this says one benefit. So this must be a benefit, okay? So again, pause the video, have a go at this now, uh, get to it. Right, so let's just check out some of the uh, potential answers. The mark schemes identified for us. Notice here as well, as I've considered in another video, you get one mark for the identification, which say 01. Uh, and two marks for the development, the explanation at that point, okay, uh, which say a one B. So again, three sentence based approach, okay, IDLT works perfectly. Social media cheap method, and as a result, the business uh, may be able uh, to reduce spending on other forms of communication. As a result, fixed costs may be reduced. Uh, fine, and we've got another potential answer here as well. Super job, let's move it through. Now that's not to say that those are the only answers that you could put down there. Anything that is a reasonable answer is entirely acceptable. Okay, so uh, now we're into uh, question two. Which two of the following are examples of the role of entrepreneurship? Okay, so we've got more multiple choice questions. Just notice the actual uh, stretch of these multiple choice questions is that much harder because they're now asking for uh, two uh, from five. Uh, so that makes it a little bit trickier. The depth of your understanding needs to be that much better than the multiple choice questions we just saw. Okay, so we can see our answers uh, nice and easily there. Right, let's uh, let's keep on rocking through here. Uh, so now we're into uh, a calculate-based question. Uh, now there's no reason really why these questions should really upset you. Uh, you've just got to make sure you read the questions carefully and just give it a fair crack, all right? So uh, have a go at that now. And let's have a look at the mark scheme. Okay, so um, here we go. We can see that to actually calculate this, we've got to uh, take our figure there, 17,473, divide it by 205,320, and multiply by 100 to get the right answer. Okay, so we're just working out the number um, of uh, startups in Birmingham as opposed to uh, London there, okay? Uh, and uh, as a percentage of Birmingham, uh, as a percentage of London, rather. Okay, so then we're back on to our explain questions. Explain one impact. So this can be a benefit or it can be a drawback here. 
uh, on a small business of a reduction in government taxation. So this could be that uh, it could lead to or rather your uh, one impact could be a positive impact because consumer spending may rise. This would lead to increased business sales. Therefore, the business, small businesses could make more profits. OK, uh, so it could be to that effect or it could be a reduction of uh, taxation uh, affecting the small business itself. So, again, there's different ways you can take that question. Have a look at what we've got here. OK, um, so two suggested answers. Pause the video if you want to run through those. Right, so let's move it through. Uh, so explain one reason why a business could use a market map. Uh, okay, so it's really about understanding market positioning. It's about doing effective uh, marketing research and establishing a gap in the market, of course. And we can see that point made about a gap in the market in the uh, mark scheme just here. Okay, so it can lead to the development of a uh, new product that does not have any competition. As a result, the number of sales may increase. Lovely job, okay? So that IDLT structure, really practice that because you've got 18 marks coming down of these explained questions, all right? So it's massively important you're good on that. Uh, okay, so then we're into another multiple choice question, just one this time. Uh, so which one of the following is a benefit of starting a, a business as a franchise? Uh, okay, right, so what are we uh, likely to have here? Well, of course, it's likely to be B. Okay, so uh, let's uh, scroll on down and we see B, that lovely job. Okay, so next question is now focusing on uh, a calculation of the margin of safety. Margin of safety, really simple concept that many students get wrong uh, over and over again, okay, for no good reason. Uh, it's simply that we're selling 400 units of output. There's the break even point where total cost equals total revenue. So therefore, 400 minus 250 is, of course, going to be 150. Uh, so what do we see? Yeah, there it is. Okay, super stuff. Uh, so let's uh, now continue through, see what we've got up next. Okay, so explain one disadvantage to a small business of using an overdraft as a source of finance. Okay, so one disadvantage is, so you've got to focus on a disadvantage here. Uh, so uh, let's just check out our mark scheme, see what we've got here. They've got a high rate of interest and this will lead to higher fixed costs as a result. Uh, profits of the business may fall. Perfect. OK, love that. Uh, another potential answer given here, is, of course. OK, uh, super job. Another explain question. Explain one benefit to employees of employment law. Remember what I've said, don't take up all this space. You don't want to be rewriting the question just simply state what is the benefit okay so you might say that you get a guaranteed minimum wage you can just write that don't repeat the question back really annoys me when i see that such a waste of time uh okay so uh let's now see what we've got here okay uh yeah it could be about removing discrimination absolutely okay and notice the development of each of these points uh and then we've got a potential second answer again there lovely okay so let's keep on going uh, now last question okay on section a last question discuss the impact on a business of having limited liability okay so we got a six marker now uh, now let's uh, just show you the actual uh, mark scheme for this and the way that this is assessed you can see you've got AO1B which is your ability to make interconnected points uh, and AO3 a, which is really developing uh, a, a really good relationship and good business understanding throughout the points that you're making, okay, that everything is coherent and really makes sense from a uh, commercial perspective. Uh, okay, so as such, what do you want to do is to make sure that you use that IDBLT plus MC plus your application approach, okay? So you identify an impact. Whether that's positive or negative, it doesn't matter in this case because it says impact, so you've got a choice. Um, so you might say, well, this is positive because having limited liability may encourage uh, the owners to take more risks, okay? And then you say this is because 
uh, and so on. And, and then you just run through the, the points that are actually uh, observed there, okay? So uh, it becomes nice and straightforward there, but you've got to practice that ID BLT and plus MC. You need five connected sentences to reach top level three here and get into that five to six mark boundary, okay? Uh, all right, great stuff. I'll just put the uh, mark scheme up there so we can uh, get to have a little look at that, okay? But that's our last question on section A. So you can see how quickly you can actually get through these questions um, if if you know how to structure your answers nice and quickly and go go nice and nice and fast through the paper great stuff guys i hope you've enjoyed that as much as i have all right see you next time